Hi, my name is Mandy Buchanan and I'm the owner of the Go Deeper Bible Studies blog. And in this series, we are having a look at the gap in Genesis and how the earth actually wasn't created in Genesis 1 and finding out what was actually created in Genesis 1 and what the earth was like before Genesis 1. If you've missed the two episodes where I looked at what was actually created in Genesis 1, and what the earth was like before Adam, then I encourage you to take a look at the videos in the description below before you watch this one. In today's episode, we are going to be looking specifically at the destruction that came upon the earth before Genesis 1. And to understand this, we first need to understand that when God created anything for the first time, he created it good and perfect. The things that he created in Genesis 1, the animals and man, when it's, when we told how God created them in Genesis 1, it always says, and God saw that it was good. So we know that on principle, when God creates something, it is good. But when we look at Genesis 1 verse 2, it says the earth was formless and void. And the Hebrew words used there are tohu vabohu. And those words together are used three other times in the Bible. And the alone, they are used more. But whenever they are used, it's a very negative context. It's a message of destruction and judgment. So when we see that the earth was formless and void in Genesis 1 verse 2, it wasn't a pleasant thing. It was speaking of a destruction that had come prior to that. The two other times where the words tohu vabohu are used together are in Jeremiah 4 verse 23 and Isaiah 34 verse 11. And I'm going to read these verses from the King James Version. Jeremiah 4 verses 23 says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens, and they had no light. I'm just going to continue reading so that you can see more of the judgment. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black. Because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man dwell therein. And we see here yeah, Jeremiah 4 is very similar to, to Genesis 1. The, the sky was dark, the man disappeared, and the earth was completely destroyed. And I'll read in Isaiah 34 verse 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. That confusion and emptiness are tohu vabohu. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. And we see in both of these instances that it, it was a time of destruction. And so it's... Those words in Genesis 1 verse 2 show us a destruction. And what was that destruction? What we know is that in the first destruction of the world, Satan fell 
and God completely destroyed everything that had been on earth. But he, he left the core of the earth intact. The earth was still there, but it was overwhelmed with water. Because we see in Genesis 1 verse 2 that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So you can see that there was a great flood. And this was even bigger than Noah's flood. Because it completely destroyed everything on earth. There, there weren't even any people left. Whereas a Noah's flood, at least Noah and his family and all the animals that he took with him survived. In the flood in Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2, nothing was left. And we also see evidence of that flood in 2 Peter 3 verses 6. It says, Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Here in verse 6, we see that the world that then was, that was the world before Genesis 1 verse 3. So in Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2, that world was overflowed with water and it perished. It completely perished. We can't say that the world that Noah had perished because Noah survived and the animals that were with him survived. But in this flood, everything perished. It says the earth perished. Um and then God had to begin creating anew. So we see here that gen God didn't create anything negative. He didn't create the world in a state of judgment like we see in Genesis 1 verse 2. But that judgment was as a result of Satan's rebellion and the corruption that had been on the earth before. And God completely destroyed that and wiped it out. And he did that by means of a massive flood so that the earth was completely covered in water. There was no distinguishing between earth and heaven as we now know it because it was all full of water. And then in Genesis 1 verse 3, God began recreating it and he, came, he allowed the dry land to appear out of the water. And, and started recreating man, recreating the earth for man. So I trust that you've enjoyed today's session. And next week we'll have a look at what some other people have to say about this concept and the idea of the gap theory and what it's meant to them. And... Yeah, I trust that you'll join us for that as well, and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, and goodbye.